Okay, I think I know what the song is about, but do you want to give us some insight on what the song is about before we play it? Okay. Okay. Uh, (laughs) With with no disrespect to to our forefathers Uh uh, in queer core, but I was the song uh, Dick of Death came on uh, once when I was in a car with a bunch of friends by Pansy Division. Okay. And I said something along the lines of like, like, you know, we were talking about penis sizes and I was like, it's completely irrelevant to me. Like I've slept with men that don't even have penises. I don't really care. Um, So the song was kind of, I I, I was sort of doing it as an answer to that song. Uh, And then I also kind of put in like, like a little bit of like commentary on how Americans really just always want bigger, bigger is better. Uh, And so uh, you know, it's twofold, you know. Yeah, let's jam this song right now and let's give Kayala the floor. She, I know she had some questions and did some research that she wants to talk about. Let's play this song. Kayala, I don't know if you heard this song, this song quite yet, but we are going to play it in its entirety. It's like a little over three minutes, 30 seconds long. So let's jam it right now. Here we go. <laughs>
All right, man. That is such a cool song, Kale. What did you have to say? We kind of talked about it a little early. What questions did you have? Well, uh, what was it about this song? I really enjoyed that song, by the way. But uh, it you. was the Gary's Making Biscuits. I just oh, I need yeah, to know. I need to uh, know. So, uh, <laughs> so I, 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 wrote, I wrote that last one and, and Gary's Making Biscuits. Uh, but I kind of co-wrote it with somebody who didn't realize I was co-writing it with them. <laughs> we have a friend. Uh, her name's Bopa. And... She she runs basically like an outreach soup kitchen uh, in her home. Uh, and she has this cat named Gary that adopted her. And she was posting videos of her singing to this cat whenever it like makes biscuits on her. Um, and so I was talking to our drummer one day and I was like, I think we should write a song for Gary and just steal the words that she's been singing and just put it to a tune and not tell her that we're doing it until we release the record. Um, so uh, I sat down on my couch and wrote that song, wrote that song in like five minutes. Um, I brought it best in. Songs. Best songs, five minute songs. Right. It's, it's literally three chords. Uh, <laughs> I brought it into practice and I said, this song needs to be 15 seconds long. Uh, and they talked me out of it and, and we extended it some. And uh, but it's it's like 55 seconds I know, uh, after 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 they're convincing. Um, (laughs) But we we she was at shows where we would play it and she never picked up on it. Uh, And I would introduce the song as uh, usually like we'd play it first back then. And I would say we're middle aged queers and this is a song about boy pussy. And then we'd start sing like singing that song (laughs) because that description's technically accurate. Um, and it just went over people's heads when, when the record came out, uh, we, we played it for her first, uh, and she was totally taken aback and she sent us tons and tons of video footage of Gary, uh, over the next couple of weeks. So we just kind of merged it all together with, uh, videos of us playing that song live. And that was our first video, um, which was hilarious because all these like reputable uh, news sites started picking up that we'd like debuted our first video. And we were like, I did that in like iMovie in like 30 minutes. Yeah. Okay. Um, but it was cute because people would be doing these roundups of like different mu- new music videos for the week. And people would be like, yeah, we spent like $10,000 doing this video. And we spent each of us spent like five hours in, in hair and makeup. And we were like, oh, okay. <laughs> Ours was free. Uh, <laughs> a, lot, a, lot of, a lot of people are doing their own like music video shoots when now with size queen uh that is that's more of a lyric video than a music video uh i would say do you guys plan on coming out with just a music video or are you gonna keep it just as that because it, it, it and it really kind of works as both because even though it's more of a lyric video it's very entertaining and it draws attention like a music video would. Is there any thoughts of doing something else with it? So for that song, that song is, it, that's the music video. That's done. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, yeah, done. that's, yeah, that's done. Um, but actually, uh, Thursday, we're recording a video at Great American Music Hall. Uh, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to give too many spoilers, um, but it's, it's going to be what? a, a Thursday. Wait, so th- this Thursday? This Thursday. So we're going to this on Friday. So there's no spoilers. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, there's no but, spoilers. But it's going to take a few weeks for it to be edited. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, so gotcha. So we're, gotcha, we're gotcha. like going full out. Like, I, I think all of us, we've been texting each other like mad, like with our inspirations for 80s glam rock. Uh, the song is the least of our like songs to be uh, compared to 80s glam rock. Uh, okay. But the the song will be on the next the next album that's coming out on Satan Records, uh, and it's called Satanic Mills, um, and it's it's just going to be us performing at uh, this venue here called Great American Music Hall, which is which is a pretty big space. It's kind yeah. of like it's kind of like the last the last club you play at before you start playing at like uh, you know like a big stadium. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, so it's a decent sized club, but there will be nobody in it. So we're just gonna like. Anyway, you'll see. You'll see. I, I assume I assume your band with the name Middle Aged Queers, which is that that name could either be a punk rock band or it can be like 
like maybe like a kind of a pop group, possibly uh, with, with them like that. I just think it's going to catch on, and I think a lot of people are going to catch wind. It's just it's just a name that you hear that in middle aged careers, you kind of want to be like, what do they sound like, you know? And being in the punk scene, I would assume it's just. I mean, you guys had to have a growing uh, that kind of just once you started playing. How, did you guys do a lot of shows before COVID? Yeah, we did. We did. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, it definitely started growing, uh, like, considerably right after we played a show uh, with the Avengers and Agent Orange. Okay. Because uh, we were just, like, we were just playing with people we knew up until that point. Um, mm-hmm. And I, I don't know anybody in Agent Orange or the Avengers. <laughs> um, right. But it was, it was kind of wild because, you know, like, I, I'm, no, I'm used to a normal show where after you're done, like, your 30 or 40 friends just kind of go like, good job tonight. Oh, cool. Thanks. And it's just yeah. people that know, you know? Um, and I walked out into the crowd after we finished playing and people I didn't know were there and people, I got to talking to people and I was like, wait, you drove how far to get to this show? Like, yeah, uh, it's going to happen more and more too. I, I bet, I bet you it's going to happen more and more. Well, and you know, the next, the next month we played a show at this, there's a, there's like a, a Latin, uh, LGBTQ bar in uh, San Francisco's Mission District called El Rio yeah. that mm-hmm. does a gay music night or a queer music night. Mm-hmm. And we, we played that and we had people come up to us saying, I saw you, I saw you at Slim's with Agent Orange and the Avengers. Um, and so that was kind of neat. And we played at another gay bar maybe like two months later and people were coming up and saying the same thing. Uh, and it was, it kind of amused me that there was a bunch of like straight couples there at this like gay leather bar. Well, okay, okay, but you are a punk rock band, right? Right, you are right, a punk right, rock right. And how, and how many people in the LGBTQ community, I guess you're in the Bay Area, so, but how many would you say are into punk rock? I would say that there's more here than a lot of other places. Right, exactly, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're you not know, gonna find have, much of that in Oklahoma. <laughs> we have more punks and we have more queer people. So yeah, that no, that's also very true. But I, but I, I bet you're going to draw a lot of uh, straight crowds into, especially playing playing fast, hard punk, even outside the Bay Area. Um, I just, I just think that you guys have a very catchy, unique, very energetic and entertaining sound, right? right. Like, yeah. like Kayal is never. I don't even know if she's into punk rock at all, but. Like, who could not like this song? If you like rock and roll at all, you're going to like this. You're going to like Size Queen. It's just a great song. Great, you know, great lyrics, man. So good good job with that. Thanks. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it a lot. Yeah, do me too. And do you write all of, uh, do you write most of the music, uh, like lyrics and music, or do you guys all collaborate? I know there's four of you. It's a quartet, right? Yeah. Uh, I think it's three males and one, one female. Is that the drummer? Yeah, yeah. And so, okay, all what was the nickname to the drummer you, you looked up? Do you have uh, a nickname well, no, to the band? Well, no, it said uh, Nikki. She beats uh, beats the drugs. I mean, oh yeah. Or so, oh, okay. Okay, that, that was uh, all that stuff that was on there about you guys is pretty uh, catchy. Oh Nikki yeah, Perry. we 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 have fake instrument names. So like, <laughs> cool. Mag wields the six string guitar of or the the six string axe of doom. And Josh plays the 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 bass bass and sometimes bass. other fish. Yeah. Um, and then I I yell and call it singing. Um, <laughs> That's so, what I do. That's what I do. <laughs> right. I um. So I I play bass and uh and I I I I don't in this band. It was very confusing when we first started talking because I assumed that I was going to be playing bass guitar. Uh, and then it was made clear to me that I was not being recruited for those purposes. Um, and that's okay. Um, yeah. but it, it became kind of this stretch because I played in, I, I would play in bands where I, I could kind of hide behind an instrument <laughs> right? and I was screaming, you know, like I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't trying to get somewhere around the pitch of the music. Right, right, right. Uh, and so I kind of had to like reset how I did vocals in a band because it was completely different to how I'd done it in the past. Um, so I would say that that it's it's not evenly split between the three of th- the three of us between me, the the bassist, and our guitarist. Um, okay. But there's there's probably about half of the songs where I've written music, and that's cool. That's cool. And I also see you guys are cruising down, uh, what is it, the 